Drop it down. Drip like Jam. Water. 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 Hit the break. Beep, beep. Drip like Jam. Water. 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 Hit the break. Beep, beep. Get out of my way. Yo, what me you're watching the traffic jam well, welcome everybody to traffic jam once again um as i always say i'm not your regular host i'm just filling in and today we have uh, a few uh brilliant i say comedians on the show with us and i'll let them introduce themselves um first uh left to right mr aldo Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good morning. Aldo here, a.k.a. Aldo Laugh on all social media platforms. Thank you. And and new to the group, Mr. Harvey. What's up, everybody? It's comedian Sean Harvey, Bronx, New York. Mr. Get Right To It. Child support is paid. What's going on? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's the big homie right there. That's your boy, Talent. Back at it for another action-packed traffic jam. What it do, man? All right, guys. Well, again, thank you for, for joining us again today. Now, um, as you know, we like to have fun on here. Um, and when comedians put out specials, we let them know it was great or, or we cook them. Yeah. Um, we did one. We did a special. Yes, we did. Yep. Um, May 24th at 275 Park in Brooklyn, um, hosted by, you know, the one and only talent. I would like to know off top, how funny would you say this special was? Uh, on a scale of one to 12, I'd probably give it a seven and a half, eight um, overall, you know, counting everything overall. And that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good number. Um, but, you know, we always strive to do better and be close to perfect as possible. I thought the audience was was right on point. Um, I, I thought the comics, we had four uh, guest comics go up other than myself. And I think, you know, we had one bomb all the way out. We had one kind of start a little slow and get a little momentum towards the middle and the end. And then we had Aldo right here and A.G. White just like, Two grand slams on the show, just bringing three runs in. So we won the game six to two because <laughs> we had these grand slams. <laughs> if we didn't have these grand slams, a little professional hosting sprinkled in the middle of all that, uh, we might have we might have lost that game in, in extra innings, but we won. Aldo, what, what do you think? I agree. Uh, it was a great, it was a great show. Uh, audience was there to laugh when. Uh, when we did our job, so you can't ever you can't ever blame the audience. I hate comedians that blame an audience. The audience was no good. No, no, no. You were no good. Stop blaming the audience. But overall, it was a great show. Talent was hosting it. He was the coach. He was making sure each one of us got on stage and did what we had to do. I had a fantastic time. Um, so, like always, you know, people. I I also saw new comedians just have fun. And, and I know you guys hear it. What does that mean? Look at me on stage. Do I look like I'm having fun? I'm having a blast. So, and the audience will always feel that energy from me. So like Sean, Sean, you, when you watch Sean on stage, you know he's having a good time. He's smiling, he's jumping up and down. So that's just the, the, the energy you give is the energy you're gonna get back. So that's why I'm always 100% up there. But I had, a, I had a great time, can't wait for the next one. And uh, so thank, thanks for having me uh, part of it. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Harvey, what say you? Well, okay. Uh, see, see I, uh, first of all, to my two brothers in comedy, they're definitely on point with the uh, assessment of the show. See, sometimes with the comedians, especially new comedians, the stage sometimes is a little, it's too big for them, meaning that maybe they're not, be, they're not ready for it, especially when comedians, you know, bomb out or don't do well. And I just think it's just a natural progression of comedy with some comedians. Uh, I don't give, uh, I don't get on the new jacks or the new comedians uh, and say, "Yo, you gotta get funny." I think it's a natural process. But uh, like New York King Talent just said, and Aldo, especially when he mentioned uh, when when the New York King mentioned Aldo and Ag White, who are veteran comics, uh, 
we usually use the term money in the bank. They're money in the bank comics. So they're going to save the day. So for the newer comedians, I think it's like a lesson uh, just to watch veteran comedians uh, go on stage and, uh, and, and perform and tell a jokes with the punchlines and setups. But that takes time. So for the newer comedian, especially the first guy, uh, yeah, he was a little lost. Uh, there was a, a lack of confidence. Uh, the jokes weren't hitting. But that's the beauty of stand-up comedy. Like, if you stay on stage and, and you fall in love with it, you will get to w the point where you need to be with the funny. So New Jacks, uh, and, and especially newer comedians, especially that was on your show, it was just a natural progression. That's where they're at in the game. And uh, A.G. White and, and, and New York King Talent and my good friend Aldo saved the day. Extra innings? Uh, yeah. Uh, how many innings were extra innings? If it was 11 innings, I think you guys won. If it was 15, then you <laughs> won. Good point. All right. Now, when I was uh, getting the uh, comics together for the special, I didn't have this in mind when I'm about to ask you. When I look back at who was on the show, I see that we had a variety. We had diversity. We have um, the Indian guy, he's from India. We have we had a woman. Um, we had a white comic. Um, we have Aldo. Aldo, I don't know if you're Hispanic. Are you Hispanic? I'm whatever you want me to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we had a diverse... <laughs> I said the car. When people go, what are you? I go, I'm Aldo. So my, my question, so my question is, do you think the diversity was a plus or a, a minus uh, for the show? Aldo? Well, I always, any show that I ever produce, my shows are always very diverse. I always have a little bit of everything because I don't want you to come to my show and be like, it was this type of show. That I, the, funny is funny. I don't care if you're white, green paraplegic whatever you are if you're funny i'm putting you on stage it was a nice we had a nice diversity um you know the, you mentioned the first comedian he, you know he's not as seasoned as we are um but going forward now now you know what you got to do you know but i i always say i always like having a diverse comedy show i always like having a, a female uh on stage because Let's let's face it. When we go to comedy shows, there's always more women than men. So it's always yes. good to have a female on the show to to bring that you know estrogen on stage. Um, but I I always say 100% diversity is is a plus for me. And one thing, uh, another uh, one of our comedy comrades, Kenny Williams, he said he always told me one thing I love about doing your shows is that I always get to work with comedians I never worked with before which is what I do. I always like putting everyone together because at the end of the day, comedy is a family. So that's the way I look at it. But I think it was a great show, you know, but always, I always keep it, keep it diverse, you know, but it's your call, but that's what I do. But I think it was overall, it was a great, it was a great experience. Now me, I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Right. <laughs> that's true. I told, I told Mark not to do this. Right. <laughs> let's, let's, I let's, go on let's go on record. You know me. You guys know I don't hold my tongue. I'm. I consider myself a, a, a son of this game, uh, student, constant student. But from my experience, we mess up sometimes when we worry about aesthetics and optics. To me, when we do optics like this, we're worried about the projection of, of somebody else's view. I'm right. hired to bring the funny and put together the funny. I'm going to always do that. I'm always going to uh, digress into a funny show. I don't care if it's a woman. I don't care if it's a midget, a, a grown man, a white man, a black man, a Spanish man. I just know funny, and I'm always going to put together funny. So when Mark came to me with this idea, I said, Mark, you out of your rabid-ass mind. <laughs> Mark said, because Mark, his Mark. Mark tell you who on the show, and then tell you, politely tell you, yeah, I think he's going to bomb. Then why do we have him? Yes. Now, I have yes. To, yes. I said the same thing. Yeah, you don't book a guy you know is going to bump. You got lucky because you hired me to be the glue and the host. So guys like me, us three right here on camera, I'll honestly say this. 
us three are great hosts, all of us, each each individual. I, I can set my watch these up to you guys as well. And we know how to, to band-aid situations. And pick, but you're going to get shows, bro, where you're going to hire people to host, and they're going to take the position of host, and they're not going to be good at that. And because you had that guy or girl uh, that bombs out like that, it's going to become, what, what that can easily be is contagious and a chain reaction. I've seen shows. The reason I do what I do, I think you'll see, you know, no disrespect to the little homie, but you'll see what I what I had to do with him is walk that line of, okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Let's make it funny, whatever the case may be, but let's not make him slit his wrist either, right? Yeah. So, but it catches up because if I don't do that or if I'm not capable of doing that, I leave a pit for the next comedian. And the next comedian is definitely going to come out and struggle more than they need to because of that pit that I, that we left. We didn't fill it in with the gravel or the soil or the dirt or whatever. So that on my part has to be done in that situation. But going forward, it, it's not, when you don't book somebody, it don't mean you don't love them. You don't, them, you don't, them, you don't them, them. You're just, at the end of the day, you have to take the business approach of it and say, I'm trying to give a good product. You wouldn't open a restaurant and know that the food is there. And you're, right. and you're trying to feed people. That's the food here. Yeah. Nobody's ever saying that in the restaurant. Yeah, I wouldn't need it. You're not going to say that about your own restaurant. So you got to treat this like a, a fine um, wine or a meal. And that's how I treat the comedy shows. I go forward with that. So, I mean, like going forward, like Aldo said, now you, you know, you've seen something that we were trying to tell you up front. It's your first baby. We don't have a million of these babies by now. I'm 33 years in the game. I can't even count how many shows, but this is where we are with it. So when you hire us, this is why I tell people, because you're the promoter now, forget being the podcast host of this event, you're the promoter. And what we struggle with with promoters is if you're going to hire us, use our expertise. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You never um, go to the mechanic and go, move out the way. Let me see what's going on. You yeah. brought it to me. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I gotta, I, I gotta agree because uh, me, you know, me and me and T, we we kept telling you, Mark. <laughs> he kept telling us, and I'm like, well, why would you have this guy? That's like going, that's like going to uh, uh, what we call like, let's go, let's go to a, a whorehouse, but they're all wearing chastity belts. Yeah. <laughs> who's gonna get? Who's gonna get it late? I don't right. got the key. <laughs> you know, you know, you, you know, you know, you know what it is, is you know, it's, Aldo, that's funny as that's funny as hell. And uh, I want to give a big <laughs> shout out to uh, Aldo pajama top that he's wearing. Now, you make uh, you so, you make says the guy going in and out of the car doing Uber Eats. Yo, you know, you know, you know what's weird about that is the fact, and it's so true. Um, like you can't have you can't hire your cousin to do the DJ party when you need a professional DJ. That's what this is. You, of course, uh. To have a diverse lineup is what you want to do. But we all practice that uh, as far as Aldo and Talon and myself. But they are funny comedians. Correct. It's, your, it's your brand you got to protect because a lot of people, only thing they're going to think about, boy, that comedian, he wasn't funny. I'm not going back no more. Some people think that way. Is it a form of people pleasing? Is it a form of I'm trying to include everybody? Sometimes that backfire on you in the worst way. Remember, I mean, as a promoter or a producer, people are spending their money, but most importantly, they are investing their time to come to a comedy show. So you want to give them the best show that you can. Now, now, unforeseen is different. So maybe it's a comedian that you know that's funny, but bomb. That's different. If you know that this comedian is going to bomb, you don't put them on the show. That's the open mic or, you know, until they build to that point. Unforeseen is one thing. If you know that this is happening and it's going to happen, it's different. You got to think of the customer. You got to think of their time. But most importantly, you have to respect the art of stand-up comedy. You got to respect the art. You have to put up the comedians that you know that is funny enough for your consumer base to come back. Shout out to the New Jacks. I was there. There were shows I couldn't. I wanted to be on, and I wasn't allowed to be on on these shows because I just wasn't there yet. So diversity, yes. Uh, 
But in that diversity, they all have to be funny. Putting a, a comedian up on stage knowing that they're going to bomb, that's not a good look. Or have a, uh, like Aldo and Talon uh, would know, uh, have a New Jack segment before the main show. Have two or three New Jacks do two or three or four minutes and then get on to the main show. Separate the uh, comedian. That would be the proper way to do, the proper way to run a comedy show, especially if, and especially if you know you got a New Jack that's going to bomb. I feel bad now. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad. You you did this. No one did it. You did it for yourself. This is what this is a struggle on our end, guys like us. Now, don't get me wrong. Every comedian is not like us. Every comedian does not want the responsibility. They don't want to call people. They don't want to be responsible for booking in and them arriving and all that. But then you got guys like us who play both sides of the field. So we play the sides where we're hired guns at sometimes. And then we're people who coordinate, produce these shows and direct them. So when you hire a guy like that, uh, it's up to me because I'm not stingy with, I feel like anything you hire me for, I need to give you my wisdom, give you my help. Because if I come in and don't even offer it, it's a great disservice, first of all. You know, yeah. and, it, and how much do I care about the show? If I it, Then it's just a hustle and a money grab. If I don't care yeah. nothing about the show, I'm just going to come in and do talent and leave. I don't think that's right. I think once you hire me, you give everything I can give you. Hey, like Sean said, hey, man, look, you need to cut these lights up. Uh, yeah. Tell the to bring the mic down a little bit. Uh, but, yeah. Bring the chairs up. Because we know the ambiance that puts us in the best position to win. It's like anything else. Like Sean said, yeah, random things can happen and go wrong. But don't you want to play the odds? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Even when sometimes when me and Talon, you know, we're always on the road together. Sometimes we'll go check out a show and I'm always like, why is this on? What's up with this? And he's always like, yeah. it's not your show, bro. Just just sit there, watch the show. But I'm always working. My mind is always like, this has to be fixed. This has to. I did a show the other day in New, Ro in, uh, New Rochelle, I think it was. The microphone, I'm, I'm closing out the show. I'm in the DJ booth helping out the sound because yeah. it, that shouldn't be my job. This is something that should be done before the show. But it's right. just like we're in working mode. I want it, even though it's not my show, I want it to be 100%. I want the crowd to enjoy themselves because by the time I get on stage, I want it to be perfect. But Tal always makes fun of me. He's like, you're not working. Just sit down and relax. Because I'm always like, why is this here? Why is that then? All right, let me ask you guys this. Um, I forget which one of you mentioned it, but one of you guys mentioned something about someone having an off night or um, you've seen them before and they, they killed but tonight they didn't do so good. Um, this night that we had uh, May 24th for the traffic jam, comedy jam, who do you think killed it, if anybody? Uh, like who, who was really on that night? Well, First um, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, like I said, I, the, the Aldo and AG killed it. I mean, like, knocked the ball out the park. Like I like to use a phrase like basketball, put the ball where they can't play with them or some kind of ball go bounce up on the roof and the game's over. So these two guys had those kind of sets. So I would put them as equally destroying the role. I probably would give Aldo a little edge because uh, it slightly at the end, I would say, you know, AG thing kind of, you know, fizzled. But he was already at the end, but it was fizzling like, say, the last row. But Aldo was like, bang, 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 bang. And to me, like, get off, you're good, get off, you know. Uh, so by a half a point, you know, you got to edge it out to uh, to Aldo. Um, uh, the Algiers had moments. She had a couple of moments in there. But her style, and I don't know if that's her style. I'm only going by it that night because that's the only time I've seen it. But if I had to go by that one night, she came off kind of, uh, sometimes we can talk on stage and come off like a poet. It makes any sense. Like it's like you're, you're talking instead of, having that comedic value. So I think she was feeling a little uh, lackluster and was, but but she handled it. One thing I like, it was like a car going down a windy road. She was handling the curves that made it decent. And then you got to understand something. You're coming in a spot behind the little homie. The little homie got on his magic carpet, he got the hell out of this. She came behind that. <laughs> that's, a little, that's a little test right there. Little, little, little Indians over there. My bad. Now, I want to ask you guys this, and I want to ask this 
like talent's not sitting here. Um, hold on, hold on. Let me del- let me delete his page. <laughs> now talent yeah. knows how I think he done or did. We're already writing hood over here. <laughs> that night, right? Because me, me and talent have spoke about this. He knows what I think of his performance that night. What do you guys think? Um, how he did as a host. Oh my God. Well, listen, first of all, thank God my friend just fixed my flat tire so now I can get on the road and go home. And the only reason why I say, and why I bring up that analogy with my flat tire just now, the New York <laughs> King never the New York King never has a flat tire. The New York King of comedy is like I said before, whether he's there or not, and I've said this anyway in other conversations with other comedians. It's 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 the term is money in the bank. There are certain people, and the king is included, and I think the king is top five in the country. I'm talking about as far as hosting. So you gotta look at it on all levels. The New York King talent can host the show, he can open the show, he can feature a show, and he can close the show. He can book the show and he can promote the show. And he has great relationships with other comedians in the game that are bookable that he has a relationship with. So if he's top five in the, I mean, top five with everybody, I'm talking about all the A-listers that everybody knows, all these people. This is a comedian, just like I said before, and I'll yield to Aldo. This is a comedian that when you book him or have him produce a show, you walk away. You walk away and just allow this man to do his thing. Top five in the whole urban circuit, mainstream circuit, everything, New York King. That's my opinion. Aldo, what say you? He did I. After all that shit he spoke, what am I going to say? <laughs> Yo, Aldo, he did all right? He did all right. <laughs> he did what he has to do. That's what we do. You know, we're, we're the coach. We're we're up there. We make, you know, we, we if this guy doesn't do good, our, 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 our job is to bring the crowd back up, get it ready for the next comedian. That's what we do. All three of us on, on, on right here on this panel, I have to agree. We are great hosts. We do everything that we have to do. We know how to host a show. We know how to produce a show. We, we could, talent always says, that one thing he loves about me, he could put me in any position, meaning I could open, right. I could close, I could feature. I'm yeah. just up there doing my job. And that's yeah. what we do. All three, I, I say all three of us on this can do our job. We, we, we're up there. We're, we're, a, we're a powerful team right here. Well, guys, um, that's about all the time we have for today. Happy that you guys are able to join me. Um, can't wait to, for the next one. Uh, Mark, thank you for having us, man. I hope we handle business. No, it was my pleasure. You guys were great. Thank you. Drop it down. Drip life. Damn. Water. 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 Get the break. Beep, beep. Drip life. Damn. Water. Water. Get the break. Beep, beep. Get out of my way. Yo, what, what, man?